Are diet sodas linked to cancer? Well, a new study shows that there's an association between drinking diet sodas or ingesting artificial sweeteners and cancer. You can see the headlines. I put one right here from Insider, but there's a bunch of other people sending me different news articles related to this study. So I wanted to go quickly through this study and kind of give an explanation along with give my practical recommendations. So uh, I'm known for uh, telling people, and again, this is like evidence-based. This really isn't a good question because it's just the way it is. I'm a cardiometabolic specialist physician. Uh, I specialize in obesity medicine and lipidology, uh, lipids, cholesterol, that type of thing. And the bottom line is that replacing sugar sweetened beverages with artificially sweetened or non-nutritive sweetened beverages, such as diet soda, is beneficial for our health in terms of cardiometabolic health. But when a news article like this comes up, my patients and followers then say, hey, uh, <laughs> I might get a little bit leaner, but am I increasing my risk of cancer? So I want to quickly go through this study and kind of give my thoughts. So... Um, to decrease your worry if you're my patient or one of my followers. Okay, so this study was this artificial sweeteners and cancer risks results from the Nutrinet Sant Sante population-based cohort study. So and usually in these in studies that we want to determine um, a, a true causal effect, we want to do a randomized controlled trial. Now, it's not always possible. So then we have to rely on some of these, this more observational um, data. And you know, one of the best ways to do this, they do what's called a prospective cohort. They grab a bunch of people and they follow them for a certain amount of time. And then they look at their characteristics and try to figure out what they're doing, what they're eating, like in this case, uh, any other of your other activities, physical activity, whatever, whatever they do, characteristics of, they, of those people, and then they watch them over time and see what's, what happens to them. So, uh, you know, they look at other cohort studies, they watch people and take pictures of their hearts and do all sorts of stuff and look at what biomarkers and everything that's related to heart disease. In this specific one, they looked at almost 103,000. They said 102, uh, 102, 80, 865 thousand adults from a f French population and they followed them for almost eight years, 7.8 years. And what they do during this specific cohort, they did what's called a 24 hour dietary recall multiple times throughout the, the studies to try to get uh, some sort of prediction of what these people are consuming. And in this specific one, they were trying to figure out obviously the relationship between the ingestion of artificial sweeteners they have um, aspartame is, is the one that you see mostly in diet sodas, but they but they also mention acesulfame K, uh, which uh, is, is sometimes an artificial sweetener you see. They don't really talk about sucralose much. They mention it, but um, they they saw the most uh, signal from uh, the aspartame or acesulfame uh, K. And when combined, they saw for those who the highest consumers compared to non-consumers, they saw a 13%. You can see right here, there's a something called a hazard uh, ratio, uh, the, the risk. Con compared to those who don't, there's like a 13%. They say 1.1. That's 13% increased risk of these cancers. Now, I think they did a really good job at like at explaining this study in the um, in the discussion. You can you can actually go here if you want to. I can put it in the notes and look at what they did. Uh, I talked to some of my epidemiology, uh, nutritional epidemiology expert friends and some statisticians to make sure I wasn't missing anything. And um, the, the thing is though, you know, when we, you, you've seen some of these other studies come up in the, in the headlines when it comes to like weight gain. So some people think artificial sweeteners cause weight gain. It's kind of a very similar types of studies where it's like, huh, these people that consume the most artificially sweetened beverages uh, tend to gain the most weight. And so it's like, I guess artificial sweeteners cause weight gain. And the problem is, is that it's really hard to uh, disentangle, uh, to remove this reverse causation. And they talk about it in here. They tried to adjust for this. Reverse causation, let's say, is it the artificial sweeteners causing weight gain? 
Or is it that people that gain weight and have obesity and overweight, they tend to just drink more artificial sweetened beverages. Now, the, the, again, through statistical analyses and, and uh, adjustments, they do try to um, fix that. Uh, but they, uh, it's, it's, really hard. it's really hard to do it. So they say here, like limitations of the study include selection bias, residual confounding, reverse causality, and, but they did these sensitivity analysis to try to address these concerns. Now, the thing is, if you look through this study and they talk about it in their discussion, I think they did a good job at least talking about this. They, they say they tried to adjust for these things, but at the same time, the cancers that they found were most related, the same, thing, the same cancers you see for people who uh, have obesity or overweight, weight-related cancers. What this leads me to believe is that they're just not able to completely adjust for the these the the reverse causality the 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 confounding and those people likely are just it's it's coming from this weight and weight related disease and 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 overall weight milieu uh, so to speak so my practical uh takeaway and recommendation is to Still, if you're drinking regular soda, because we already know that regular soda and sugar uh, increases weight, which then increases risk of cancer. Now, I'm not going to say sugar equals cancer. What I'm saying is that it's easy, we're, we readily overconsume sugar sweetened beverages and, and higher calorie yummy foods, which leads to weight gain, which then leads to increased risk of cancer. And probably if you have a a dearth, how about that word, a, a decrease in whole food type of intake and you're eating more ultra processed foods, there may be some risk there beyond weight uh, that we just don't understand just yet. But I would say a lot of it's related to energy balance and adiposity, which is also related to our caloric intake. So I would still say replace your sugar sweetened beverages if, if, if with water, ideally, yes, with water. However, there's a lot of people that are just like, I hate water. And the only thing I would drink instead of this regular soda would be a diet soda. And I still think that by far that has to be the recommendation because we can't make any um, strong conclusions from this study. I think we sh should still continue to study this. Ideally, we would have some sort of randomized trial. I don't think it'll ever happen. It'd be kind of tough, but it'd be nice to go like, hey, Here's a huge group of people. Let's let's. My favorite uh, soda is Fresca. I don't make any money from Fresca, uh, mind you. But I would say let's give <laughs> let's give these people their favorite diet soda, um, and then let's give this other group and re randomize it. Let's give this other group uh, just straight up water, bottles of water, or something like that. And then they've done this with weight loss studies, and they show that hey, people lose weight when, especially when replacing the regular soda with the diet soda or water. And sometimes they lose more weight with the diet soda compared to water, by the way. But if we could do this and you have to, you have to watch them over a long period of time, cancer doesn't just pop up within a year or two. So it has to be a long, a long, uh, a long time to be, and it's in a specific type of population, a little bit older population can't be younger. Uh, because as you're older, you do have the higher risk of cancer and things like that. So they'd have to randomize it and then follow them for eight years at least or so. I'd have to get a, an oncologist uh, and an epi oncology epi expert to, to confirm that. But uh, it would be nice to do a randomized trial. Now, the signal was small enough in this and there's so much, there, there's not a lot of mechanistic data to, to, to point towards this being biologically plausible, meaning like, what, what, what is the mechanism here? I think the mechanism is that there's not an actual mechanism. It's just that this people that tend to be heavier or gaining weight tend to try to drink more of these artificially sweetened beverages, which then as they're gaining weight, they're at higher risk for these cancers. And it's, it's hard to just adjust it. They tried, and I think they, they did a good job of explaining it. Um, and there are a few other uh, there are a few other articles out there kind of explaining the limitations. But again, my practical recommendations remain: um, if you're drinking regular soda, try to drink water. If you're not going to drink water, drink diet soda. J j get rid of the, the regular soda and either go to water or diet soda. That's it. And I think uh, that's that's the bottom line here. So again, if you like these YouTube videos, I just thought I'd try to do this again and try to find an easy way um, to do this. I mean, my brother and I, we do the podcasts. We did a podcast all about 
artificial sweeteners and weight. Um, it's a good discussion, but uh, I can do this little screen share here uh, very quickly. So let me know in the comments, uh, subscribe, share with your friends what you think. And uh, thanks for listening.